and you can see here it's stowed up in his face and zoomed out. It has this pan and a cross going down the line, so I can actually drag my little um, marker sensor and it, it slides over this things and it changes. This is what I'm looking at. Slide. Oops. This one is uh, right here. Wasn't turned. There's the sky over here, the side of the mountain. Obviously, it needs to be twisted. Go over to my little handy dandy toolbox. Come down here to this. Uh, it's actually a plug. It's called a plug in. Click on that. And I, one of these other options I have is, is that I can change the brightness of it, uh, the speed or whatever. Uh, Chroma comb, which I'm not using. Picture in picture. Pan and zoom. That's the one I normally use. Dream glow and rotate. Right now I want to rotate. And hit OK. And it's hard to see, but it, it's already rotated 90 degrees for me. Because that's the, the generally thing. Now I can actually, when I rotate it, it's not as big. So I'm going to want it a little bit bigger. Uh, so I come over here and uh, I would drag this up to, I don't know, I wanted to match. Uh, that's 79, 77. So I highlight the other one and type in 79.77. Now they both match. And I hit OK. And it, it made the picture move to the, the size I wanted. Exit out. I mean, exit out kind of means apply. Uh, it's still not a good picture, nothing worth doing anything to, so I'm just going to keep on motoring down. Now this one, you know, a lot of these portraits are, are kind of narrow, and after a while I get kind of tired of looking at them narrow. I could crop it and, and widen it out or whatever if I were to zoom in. Um, but a lot of times I'll do that in the pan and zoom. I'll go back over here, click on my pan and zoom, hit OK. That lets me have that function. Now it's in a different type of pan and zoom. This one's a little harder for me to work. It's not really hard. You have the top button, slide button over here. You slide it over. And I could make that the whole picture right like that and call it a day. Just hit OK and it would do that. But um, I like to have the whole picture because someone took the time to rotate the camera uh, that way. So I'm going to go ahead and click um, Use Keyframes. And if I click here on the little left arrow, that's the start and then I can go to the right and that's the end and I want the end to, to be the original so I'm going to hit reset it jumps the things back to the original picture and then I hit OK and it's going to apply that and I can rewind it to see what it looks like and as it comes down it's zooming. Now see how fast that zooms? It's almost hard to see so I'm going to drag it. I come back with my cursor over it, turn it to a double arrow and slide it over about a in one one second and come back and see what it looks like now that's a little bit better Just move it till it turns into a hand here and I can slide it over what I'm doing is I'm moving this picture over one this time I'm gonna add a duplicate of this picture on again and have it maybe last uh, a second so they have a chance to look at it that way the way I do that I go to my toolbox over here again there's a, a thing called grab a picture. It's a picture of a hand holding a, a, a little picture. You hit grab on that and you have the, this is a zoom in or a close up of the slide. Uh, you hit grab and it grabs whatever you have on there, which in this case is the end of the last shot because I haven't moved it off of there yet. Um, and then I hit add to movie and it adds it to the movie. It's right here, but I don't want it to be another two and a half seconds. That's my, what I set for all the pictures to be. Double arrow it. Shrink it down to about a minute and then go back and we can watch it. And it slowly comes in and then stays on that for about a second and then goes to the next picture. Now I'm going to add a title to it. So I click the T for title on the main menu here. And I have all these choices here. So I'm just going to drag one in. I don't really care a whole lot. Drag it on the storyboard. And then I have to hit the toolbox so I can edit it. And I have to hit the T here. And it says edit the text right there. There's this little thing. And the title of this one is Jill's Europe. And this was two. Hit OK.
And because I'm always trying to promote my books, the cost of me making a video is a book, so I highlight the text bar. I want to hit a full screen classic title. And then I draw a title box. Hit the font. Hit the size of the font. I'm just going to hit about 60. Hit one to use. You come over to the box and just type in Robert Brown. Oops, no space. Com. And I like to change the font. I mean the color. Presents. Click on it again. Presents, and then because I wanted to fit the way it's supposed to fit. Highlight it and I shrink the size until it goes down to two lines and then I'm going to put it in the center, middle justified, and then I'm going to separate it just a little bit so I hit the A and the B and I curse, curve it and I just drag it down a little bit like that and it separates it. Hit OK and then that's my title, WelbyBrownBooks.com presents and it goes right in into Jill's trip. Next I'm going to add music. I X this out, get my main menu again. Hit the music, oops that's not, yeah that's it. Hit the music thing there. And I'm going to use some fairies music. Uh, I met some people over there and uh, they let me use some of their music. So I'm going to use some of theirs on the video. Open folder. And I can uh, hear them. That sounds pretty good, so I'm just going to use that one. Drag it down onto the time board. That takes a while for it to zoom across and load up and do all its things. Alright, now that that's done, I'm going to go ahead and start putting some transitions in here. Uh, come up here, a transition mark looks like a lightning bolt. Here's my basic transitions, and I'm just going to just wing it. I'm not going to spend a lot of time fooling with it to kind of get the exact perfect one. Uh, this is arrow going up, and over here it kind of shows you what they do if I highlight it. And that's what that font does. And this one here, if I click on this one here, it shows it slides over that way here. So I'm just going to grab some of these and just kind of throw them in every now and then. Uh, I don't really care what they are. I don't want to put them on a star one generally because that shows movement, and this overlaps, so it's going to even shorten the movement a little bit. I can do it, but it doesn't really matter. Um, these are all just different functions. Just kind of throwing them on. Uh, drag the cursor over so I can see some more areas. I don't have to do them every one. I do them about every third or so. And just kind of randomly pick them. This kind of shows you what I'm doing. What the, what it looks like. This is straight lines like that. An arrow going up at an angle. Slide the cursor. And I pretty much just do that through the whole thing. There's, I can have them kind of close together. That's a transition one, so I don't want to do that. I can just I can actually move them around if I need to.